Do you know how much social media has affected us? You'd be surprised. Social media was once thought of as a way for people to interact with each other, but we didn't think about the consequences of trying to capitalize on those interactions and the psychology behind it. Society became addicted to social media, and it's impacted the way we interact with each other and even our attention spans. From the get-go, we were consuming videos, clips, and news at a ravenous pace. We couldn't get enough of it. But what happens when social media feeds you a never-ending amount of content. Enter the infinite scroll effect. Welcome to ALUX. Today we're talking about how infinite scrolling came to be and its effects on our society. We got stuck in a loop. Upon its conception, infinite scrolling was seen as a largely good thing. Each page or post loads seamlessly below the one you're looking at. This way you never have to click on anything or find a menu or navigation link. You just have to keep going down. Have you been on Instagram lately? You see how your feed never actually ends? That's infinite scrolling at play. Manual navigation came with breaks on its pages. These moments gave you the time to stop and consider if you really needed to see one more picture of a puppy or another meme. However, with infinite scrolling, there's never that pause. There's nothing keeping you from just going forward and moving on and on. When there's no loading between pages, there's no wake-up call. Tech companies love this, and it's hard not to see why. The more you keep scrolling, the more impressions they have on their content. You also see more ads from advertisers, which increases the chance that you'll crave and buy something. For tech companies, it's a win-win. For you, it's a lose-lose. You're figuratively, and maybe even literally, kept prisoner by your phone. I mean, think about it. What do you do first when you wake up? If you think about your phone, then you're already trapped. For many people, the first light they see in the morning isn't that of the sun or even a lamp in their room. It's the blue flash of their phone screens. And the moment you open Twitter or Instagram or any other social media that uses infinite scrolling, you're caught in a loop of finding out new stuff. You'll keep scrolling and scrolling, and before you know it, you've spent more than 20 minutes before you even got out of bed. And that is by design. Back in 2017, Instagram revealed that people under 25 spent on average more than 32 minutes per day on Instagram, with people older than that spending more than 24. Let's do some quick math here. Those 32 minutes per day become 3.7 hours in a week. Maybe that doesn't sound so bad, but if you look at it at a month, it's almost 15 hours. This means that in a year, we spend around 180 hours just scrolling away on Instagram. And that was back in 2017. SimilarWeb did a similar study, no pun intended, back in 2018 and found that the number had gone up to 53 minutes. That's 6 hours a week, 24 hours a month, and almost 300 hours a year. To put things into perspective, the average person spends between 23 and 29 minutes per day in the restroom. So on average, we're spending more time scrolling social media than we do taking care of our basic hygiene. That's a sobering statistic. But the problem is that these infinite streams of content don't have a natural point where you can just jump out. They never stop, and a combination of psychological factors and evolutionary aspects just keeps us scrolling. There's that nagging feeling that there's something else to know, and if you don't continue scrolling, you'll be left out of the loop. There's also the effect of dopamine hits that we get when we see something funny. We want more and more, and infinite scrolling keeps giving that to us. And even if you hate the way things are, there's no escaping it. If you're trying to find something specific, you'll probably have to scroll for a while, and God help you if your feed updates while you're scrolling. There is no beginning, no end, it's just a giant Ouroboros, a serpent eating itself for all of eternity. Okay, we got a little bit heavy there, but we're not that far off from the truth. But it wasn't always intended to be such a disruptive system. At first, it was just a way to keep websites working continuously and with less breaks. Where it all began. Infinite scrolling was invented, or at least implemented and used, by Azra Raskin back in 2006. He used it for an aggregator app called Humanized Reader. 
This was exactly five weeks after Twitter was launched, just to give you a better time frame reference. From the get-go, Raskin was in talks with Google about the technology, which saw the tech giant implement it on their Google Reader on September 29th of the same year. But very soon, others followed. Microsoft implemented it on their Bing search engine for the live search image function. Flickr did so with their now-scrapped Flickr River site around 2007, as well as an Australian social network called Soup.io in 2008. However, since the technology required JavaScript, which was not available for phones at the time, it took some time to really take off. For instance, Twitter didn't pay much attention to it because their core audience was on mobile devices, but things quickly started to pick up. Tumblr jumped in in 2009, followed by Google Images, Facebook, and Twitter in 2010. In those early years, a lot of implementations were flawed. For instance, Facebook caught a lot of flack for leaving out important information out of posts due to the way they implemented theirs. But brands didn't have a lot of time to sort things out as the competition was seeing more impressions from using the tech. Everyone was in now. In some cases, it was even forced on people. In 2012, the blogs on WordPress.com were given the infinite scroll feature, and all blogs using specific themes were switched to it. This was a call by the WordPress boss Matt Mullenweg, which at the time was not well received. But now, well, you know where we are now. Pretty much any social media website can take advantage of keeping you hooked using infinite scrolling in some form. YouTube and Instagram are particularly guilty of this. Raskin himself has gone on record to admit that he regrets about how the technology has been abused in the hands of big tech companies. He feels they've exploited the addictive nature of this feature, and he's not wrong. But just how bad is infinite scrolling really? The Impact of Endless Feeds Due to the advent of the internet, social media, and infinite scrolling, we are now exposed to more information than ever before. An average person gets exposed to five times more information than someone did back in 1986, and our brains can't cope with that. When there's 50 people screaming at once for your attention, you can't rest. There's no stopping to really absorb any one piece. You have to keep on going to the next one, and this severely impacts our attention. And we're not joking or exaggerating here. Back in 2014, the American Press Institute found that six out of 10 people didn't read past the headline of a news event. And we're certain that number would be lower today. In the same report, it was mentioned that around 73% of Americans expressed feeling overloaded by the amount of information they were getting from their devices and media. A study by the American Psychological Association in 2011 reported that overusage of technology was harming our brain's ability to process emotions. More people than ever are expressing feelings of anxiety, depression, or even suicidal ideation after the rise of smartphones, and it's all connected to these never-ending feeds. Do you know what FOMO is? The New York Times described FOMO as a blend of anxiety, inadequacy, and irritation caused by skimming through social media. As you scroll on and on, you keep seeing these pictures of happy people and fancy cars, and you start to feel worse about yourself. You feel like you're missing out, hence the name FOMO, or fear of missing out. Even if the rational side of your brain understands that these are just glimpses into the lives of strangers, the emotional side of you can't help but feeling left out. Some people are so addicted to social media that they even feel their phone vibrate or ring when it hasn't. This phenomenon is called phantom vibration syndrome we stopped allowing ourselves to just be bored. It's like being bored is some kind of crime these days. To quote the American comedian Bo Burnham in his song, Welcome to the Internet, apathy is a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Anything and everything, all of the time. That's the internet for you, and that's infinite scrolling at play. You have the world in your palm, and we are so addicted we can't even allow ourselves a second of boredom. A study asked people aged 18 to 24 what they did when they're not occupying their attention or bored. 77% said they reached for their phones. This is so drastic that it's affected our psychology. There are reported defects in our memory, attention spans, and our sleep cycles. For instance, social media use has been linked to issue sleeping. Is that really a surprise? A notification that keeps you up and the ever-present scrolling. Have you ever grabbed your phone to check Instagram before going to sleep only to notice that you can't sleep at all? How can you when there's no end to the content? 
there is no five minute scroll because you don't know where it begins and where it stops. And don't even get us started on how badly it hit our attention span. In just 15 years, we went from 12 seconds to 8.25 seconds, and that was between 2000 and 2015. Who knows where we're at now? As we pointed out in another video about overstimulation, social media has caused us to have lower attention spans than that of a goldfish. These constant streams of data have made it more difficult for us to filter out irrelevant information and make it so we can't stay focused on one thing at a time. Another effect of infinite scrolling is apathy. When you absorb so much information, so many events, you stop caring so much about the little things. Events in your own life seem uninteresting or small by comparison, and it's understandable. You're comparing yourself and your life to the lives of others, fed to you in an endless stream. Who could compete with an infinite number of pictures of happy moments? Life isn't like that, it's not real. But our emotional brain can't understand that. Infinite scrolling was devised as a solution to a problem that never really existed, and now it's caused us a lot of damage that we probably won't fully understand until much later. Social media definitely has its uses, and there's a lot of good that can be derived from it. But corporations have abused psychological tactics to keep us hooked, and we need to be careful with the way we engage with it. So for today, maybe drop the phone, or at least stop scrolling for a second, and at the risk of sounding like old parents, take a breather and go outside. Your brain will thank you. And as for a curious fact about scrolling, while there isn't any scientific or mathematical research on how much we scroll, in terms of distance, there have been some estimations. Some researchers have estimated that the average scroll depth of a person in a week, which is the term used for scrolling distance, is the equivalent of the height of the Burj Khalifa, and in one year, the height of Mount Everest. Sounds like our fingers are doing a lot of walking. That's it for today, Aluxers. If you want to continue the conversation, please share your thoughts with us in the comments comment section below. We always love seeing your input. And if you know someone that never stops scrolling on social media, maybe share this video with them. It might just help them to snap out of it. Thank you for watching this video, Aluxer. If you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this video for you to watch next, or head over to our website for more amazing content. See you tomorrow.